Because it took a break. Okay. Right now, the main break is here because we are live. We are. Online. One person is going through the puberty and the other person <laughs> just has a bad throat. Welcome to the Reality of Love, baby. I'm yes, Lady Green. Yes, I'm Indy Smith, and I know most of you out there can understand that this weather is crazy, and when you have allergies and pollen affects you, my sinuses are crazy, and I lost my voice. Oh. So this is my voice coming back. You are. Uh, I'm Lenny's so twin sister, Lenietta. <laughs> She's crazy. <laughs> if you never knew, now you know. She my voice is this way. I think you know. I think you you must be <coughs> you must be uh, playing with your alter ego when your voice changes. I know you have a lot of characters inside your head anyway, but when you lose your voice, you probably go really into role play. You know about role playing. Yeah. You don't know about role playing, Indy. <laughs> you can say no if you want. No. People know. I, I, pe people have an idea of how you are. What you see is what you get. No question. Yes. And well, I'm how you been, Andy? I'm good. Um, I'm like this. I'm like the end of the semester. Everything breaks down. If you notice that, don't I go crazy like the end of the week? Yeah. Well, you kind of go crazy. Yeah. The beginning, the middle. No, just the end. Just the end. Just the end. Because you just you give it your it's all. Like, it's like oh my god, you have oh, so much stuff. It's been good. It's been good, but just crazy. Nice. And now I'm sick. And now you're sick. And and I have to protect myself because he's she's not sick. that kind of sick. My producer Vito, Vito is sick. Vito is sick. Vito Everybody's is sick. Like, I, Ishay is sick. Oh, you going at you just had to be. Ishay was oh, sick. Oh, sorry. It's, it's crazy. You know. So I have to fill myself up with antibiotics right. to protect mm -hmm. the germs that just keep hitting me like five and weed. Well, from what we found out the other day. You probably was the actual carrier in the first place. Uh -huh. Yeah, you know that. I get uh, I get blamed for most of the things that I'm not the cause for it. Yep. But as you know, when we get involved, when we get to the the show every week, um, we start off by piggybacking off of uh, what we kind of liked and started in the last hour, Confessions of Love, and and tonight's topic was kind of inspired from a call that Indy had a chance to hear as it was coming in. Um, oh, I forgot to put it over there. No, um, don't, don't, don't <laughs> so, so, um, um, we decided to, we decided to make it a, a topic for tonight, and I'm glad that we did, um, so many, I mean, we have folks on hold right now, yeah. so many folks that still want to, uh, engage and, and, and give us their thoughts on the topic, in case you're just joining us for the first time, you're we do this um, show called Reality of Love every Thursday night, and we continue talking about love and relationships. Right, but we say the stuff you can't say on air. True. Yeah. Yeah. So we cover a, a wide spectrum of a lot of different things, and this topic tonight is no exception to the rule. The topic is, if your partner becomes significantly, I say that word. Significantly ill. Or terminally. Or terminally ill and can no longer fulfill their sexual needs, do you leave or do you see it through? Now, you said, you made an interesting comment just a moment ago. You said you have a whole different perspective now on marriage. Yeah. Why do you say that? Um, because listening to some of the callers and listening to your response and just listening, I've realized, I've, I've noticed that a lot of us base marriage on all these external things, meaning um, you're supposed to obey the vows. And I'm sitting there thinking, uh, somebody else wrote those vows. What if they're not the vows I choose? And it just, it really made me think, you know, I'm a very committed person when it comes to commitment and being consistent. I try to be. And so, if something's not working for me, yeah. in my best interest, to be the best person I can be to the person I love, do I really stay in that? Are they really getting me? Or are they getting um, the guilt that I have to commit to something that society says is right? So, the gentleman that calls in, 
and said what he said, and I was itching. He was being honest. He was coming from a place of honesty of where he was. That was scary. But he was being honest. He is not a person that could stick around and not have sex. Okay. And I felt like he threw her under the bus with her illness. Like the illness was the problem. Well, but in addition to that, they, this is uh, the gentleman who called in. He had been in this relationship for a mighty long time. Yeah. For eight, now maybe eight years. Now, I don't know, let's just say, for the sake of conversation, four years in, this woman gets ill and obviously cannot engage into sexual intercourse. Right. So I, he stayed and stayed and I guess tolerated it, but I guess on the inside, he was... Becoming resentful. And he wasn't having his needs met. Okay. And I guess she didn't give him the hall pass to say, hey, you know... You're with me, like the calls that we just heard that there were. You're with me, but I don't want you to be unsatisfied. Like, I'm wondering, though, if there was something else because, okay, say you're laying with a person, and for some reason, either one of you don't feel like the physical part, like after, like you're just tired, and you still want to hug, and you just want to go to sleep. Um, or say you're with someone and your need, what is the need? Is the need a release? Is the need to have another person touch you? Is, an, is the need that the sex actually represents something else? Because sex is just, we're going to talk about this book in a minute. But sex intercourse is actually just the release. And there's mental and emotional before the release. So if you're not, if he's not getting, if a person's not getting that release from another person, do you know how to please yourself? Like, why do I need to be excluded from your life? Because I can't help you release something. Do you see what I'm saying? I see what you're saying, but I mean, it, it, the question is really, you know, buried. I mean, because everybody has a, a, a level of satisfaction of sexual satisfaction for whatever reason you know, right. whether it's to fulfill their their personal need maybe it's I don't know it, it sex plays a very big part in our lives it you know, does the endorphins in our body you know are, are different from individual to individual right. so how sex filters into that is is rather interesting and that's why we say every situation is really drastically different because um, what 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 one thing might satisfy one person cannot satisfy every person. Right. So I don't know if it's just about a release. I don't know. It could be more than just a release. It could be a psychological thing. It could be a lot of things. No, and I think I think you're right. I think you're right. I, we got to get some experts in here on this one because I think a lot of times we have young people having sex now and they're not psychologically ready for that release or what that release state of being well sex so, does that anyway right because if we didn't have sex right well Holy well then what about what about couples that are in their 80s that don't perform the same so what they don't divorce each other we're living in a whole new different time though Andy. I, I i'm i'm amazed if i can find a few couples that are still married and in their 80s because people are so easy i mean that's a this is another topic for another day people get into marriage these days, not uh, not everyone gets into marriage for the long haul. Not everyone is willing to work in the relationships. We've talked about this on many right. different occasions. So I am overwhelmed when I see couples who really are down to roll up their sleeve and to work in the relationship through mm -hmm. really through the thick and thin of all, of everything. I'm, I, I love couples like that. So um, I would think though, to answer your question that those couples that have been together from the beginning of time and still existing, I think that they've learned how to satisfy each other beyond. Beyond, right. Beyond. So it's more than just, it's more, it, they have a, they're on a different plane. They're, they're like having an outer body experience. I'm going to give them the higher plateau that I don't even know anything about yet. Well, remember... Last week we were discussing you have a lot of couples that aren't having sex and aren't talking about it. 
So now you have people that are having it, but really can't have it anymore. Not not on purpose, but just because life happens and people cut out. It seems and it sounds to me like we have a bunch of human beings running around being inhumane towards each other. If you can't give me this, then I can't be with you. If you can't fulfill this, then we don't have a relationship. A lot if of you can't, situations if like I that. don't, if, if it's, it's all like, it's all centered around these external needs. And I'm not saying human beings don't have sexual needs. We all do. But you have people who are celibate and are stern on it and are fine. And then so because it, it's it's a balance of your emotions when you realize that sex is just uh, an added bonus, as right. someone said a little earlier. I'm gonna read. But hold on, let me pause you on that. I want to. Okay. We have some I'm folks on hold. So, it. which yeah. which line? Uh, line one first. Hey Desiree. 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 I got hey Des. Hello? Desiree. Yes, how you doing? I'm good, Desiree. Thanks for checking in with us. Uh, mm-hmm. Say hello to Indy Smith. How you doing, Indy? I'm well. How are you? I'm blessed, thank you. Mm-hmm. What's your thoughts on this topic tonight, Desiree? My thoughts on this topic is if you're with somebody and that type of situation occurs, if you love them, you end up for better or for worse, whether you married, been together for a month or two or years. Does it does it change if you're not married? No, it doesn't change if you're not married. Because love is love. You... Love is love, exactly. Mento. Love is love. So you could be you could be content if if your significant other had a, a bad illness and they could not perform sexually anymore, you would still be devoted and, and committed to that relationship? Yes, I can still be devoted and committed to that relationship. Wow. All right, thank you for the feedback. All right. Let's go to line number two. Line Joseph. number. That's a great name. That was my granddaddy's name. We'll go to. We're going to line number two. This is Joseph, right? Joseph. Yeah, this is Joseph. Let me say. Oh. Jersey hey. Joe, one who always calls and talks for. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Appreciate you reaching out to me tonight, man. Hey, Joseph, I want you to say hello to my co-host, Indy Smith. How you doing, Miss Indy Smith? Hi, I'm well, Joseph. I love your name. Yeah, my pleasure to speak to you, and thank you. So, what's your thoughts on this, my brother? Okay, personally, Randy Green, I think this a uh, perfect topic, one of the best topics that could have came up to me personally, you know. Okay. I'm a recipient okay. of this very uh, topic here. How so? How so? I'm, I'm, I'm going to make a long story as short as I possibly can. Okay. In 1992, I moved down to Florida. I'm originally from Jersey. Accent. I moved down to Orlando, Florida. Uh, late 92, I, I started dating. A friend, right? That turned into my girlfriend. Okay. okay. Right. It went all the way into '96. In 1996, we had a beautiful daughter, and I was fine. In 1997, I was in a car accident in Orlando, mm. and I fractured C4, C5, total, total break in my neck. Left me a quadriplegic. Wow. And uh. I said, to make a long story short, we stayed together. I went through my three months of rehab, and I came home. We had a home. We ended up selling our house and moving in with her sister two years later after my accident. Um, she started hanging out with her brother, right? Okay. And she stayed overnight one time, and I told her that would be the last time. I'm not going to tolerate that because I know her brother has a lot of male friends that he went around here. You know, it happened again a couple of weeks later, I mean, really great. and I probably would have tolerated it, but I got a call that night 
Mm-hmm. But my best friend who happened to be in the house for that morning, about 2.30 that morning, he told me that he actually heard it going on, mm. that she was having sex with another of one of uh, her brother's friends in the house. And that right there broke the camel's back. Sure. What I did was I called 911, and I complained to chest pain, which I knew was heartburn. I went to the hospital and never returned. And I had a, a long talk with my three stepchildren. They were old enough. And I left. Later on, I never even, you know, spoke to my daughter. My daughter is 18 now. I never really brought that up to her the way that went down. But that's how it is. And now, since then, I've been in those homes. I'm in a nursing facility now, but I came back home to New Jersey. Wow. And I'm here. That's that. You, um, <clears throat> I, it doesn't sound like, Any questions? it doesn't, well, I'm, I'm, did you ever have a uh, conversation? Did she ever confront you after that? Did you ever confront her? Did you guys have a conversation after that moment that you had heard that she had got with somebody? Yeah, well, after the first time she hung out, I kind of figured that, you know, something was because she couldn't really look me in the eye and, and you know, hold a, a one-on-one conversation. I, I, you know, I was just able to tell after being with right. her those yeah. six years, six plus years. But after the second time, because the second time, um, you that's when you had gotten word that, you know, something really probably went down. Was there any follow up, further uh, follow up conversation between you and her at that like, stage? Like closure. Yeah. Not right. Not right away, uh, lady. Not right away. About maybe, I say about a year later, and even today, we're the best friends now. Oh. Really. Yeah, we're the best of friends, right? So did you ever get a chance all, to kind all of? All the time, I called down there. I speak to my daughter. She was in her last year of high school. So you were able to bring closure to... Yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, that's good. I mean, I'm, oh, I'm yeah. sorry. Everything... See, I'm a man. You know, and, and when something like that happens, it's easy for people to say, yeah, I would, yeah. you know, uh, hang in there. But, I mean, we were in our prime. You got to remember, I was 33 when I got to my high <sighs> She was 34, only a year older than me. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And so we were in our early 40s when all this transpired, you know? Right, right. I mean, it, it, it's, it's, a, it's a real situation. It's hard. It's really hard to deal with when there's true love involved, you know? You're right. You're very I mean, right, man. And another thing, Mr. Green, I would say that it makes, I, I think, personally, it makes a big difference when you when there's an age group, you know? What do you mean? Like, saying what I'm that. saying is it's easier for older folks to stick together to go through something like that, you know? As opposed to younger, and somebody younger. younger folks. Interesting. I think myself. Got it. Wow. Hey, brother, I can't you thank know, you enough, man. Because hormones aren't jumping that way. <laughs> Come again? You know how it is when you're young folks, you know. Yeah, yeah, no doubt. No doubt. Well, brother, I'm but glad that... Thank you for letting me share. Well, I, I appreciate you sharing. I appreciate you being transparent with us and, and opening up to me and, and Indy tonight. Really appreciate that, brother. And, and you know what? You're in my thoughts and my prayers. You You stay strong. I know there's a purpose and there's a reason. Why, you know, your life was not taken away from you in totality. So um, enjoy life, yeah. brother. And it seems like you're getting I'm through that. nevertheless. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. My high politics very well care of me. Awesome. Yes, sir. I agree. I agree with My you on that. My faith to keeps me going. 
Hey, man, keep listening, man. Keep listening and keep enjoying us. And uh, thank you for calling tonight, brother. I appreciate you. Okay, now have a good night. God bless you both. God bless you. God bless you, brother. Have a great weekend. Good night. Bye-bye. Wow. Number six. Miss Deborah. Hello, Lenny. How you doing? I am well. Thank you for asking. Thank you for calling. Appreciate it. Uh, I am joined tonight at this moment by my co-host, Miss Indy Smith. And uh, we know that uh, you're calling to express your thoughts on the topic. So what would you say your thoughts are? My, my thoughts is that I was, um, I was standing by the person's side. And really? love is just not um, sexual. And of course, love can come in all kind of different ways. So, and it, um, I, I'm sorry. Can, can I can I just pry just a little bit? Sure. I don't know. Would you say how would you evaluate your your sex life? Uh, or would sex you say life? Do, would you say that you require sex a lot when you're in a relationship? No. I'm, to me, uh, um, in a relationship, I like to know the person, and um, sex is not the main thing about it. Getting to know the person, spending time with the person, um, enjoying the person in, in whole, and then if when sex do happen, then that's that's that, that's a plus. Okay, and the reason why I'm asking this is because um, I think that filters into a lot as well. You know, I I think it can be challenging to a person if they do have a very high sexual appetite, even though I think obviously emotion and love filters into this big equation at the end of the day. Um, but no go, go ahead. Ahead. no, go ahead. No, but what I'm saying is, is that all, all that, what you're saying is true, but if um, you're learning the person and you're learning yourself with the person, I think that um, itself that it, it would, it, we would enhance it if it happened. So then this way, if it's something that, you know, that you're no longer getting, and, and I understand the question is not being married, as being a couple, that makes it even more um, meaningful that, you know, that it's not all about the sexual thing, it's about us. Hmm. Well, but who is it, who is the sexual thing on if it's not about you I mean, when I say about us, it's like the things we enjoy doing. You know what I'm saying? It's not okay. They had um, it's more things than you know, talk and reading a book, listening to music, watching TV. Those oh, things are um, it's important too. You yeah. know, yeah, learning the person himself. Yeah, the quality of the the, the relationship has to be anyway. E- even yeah. if, whether there's a problem or you know an ill or a sickness that developed or not, I would think that those are the key ingredients, right, Indy? Right. That has to I make would, up for a great relationship, whether it's, a, whether it's a marriage or not. I mean, there has to be more than just a bedroom or more than just a sexual intercourse. There has to be more substance in the relationship to begin with. I have a friend that we're, we're not sexual, but we have, we have a, a wonderful time together. A mm. wonderful time. We do so many different things, but we have a wonderful time together. And sex is not involved in it at all. Wow. At that's, all. A, that's a good friendship. Exactly. We do a lot of different things. I've done many things. Spent a lot of time together. And it's the friendship. It's the, it's the, and when they feel bad or something is going wrong, you know, I'm there for them, him and he's there for me. That's key. That's important. Sounds like you have a great friendship. Yeah. Hold on to it. Try to. Thank you for calling tonight, my love. Appreciate your thoughts. Thank you. Have a great Thank weekend. Thank you for listening. Reality of love wow. inside. Much love. So uh, that's just a little tip of the iceberg of some of the calls that have come in. And we have... Um, Quite a few people that have uh, responded on Facebook. Harold Rogers says he would stay to the end with love. Monty Hairston, on the other hand, said, <laughs> I'm out of there. Fiona, uh, Fiona Kane says, true love, I will stay. Kelly McGregor says, if that was my life partner, I would see it through. So I guess if that wasn't your a life partner would be what? 
Uh, well, life partner doesn't necessarily mean marriage. Oh, well, what does it mean? You just found a person that you're going to spend your life with. It's worth it. Let's cohabitate? Yeah. Wow. Okay. Uh, DeAndrea says, uh, I would stay, but his problem couldn't be fixed with costly medication. <clears throat> um, oh, she's telling me about a personal situation. Oh. Uh, he didn't seek help until after I couldn't take it anymore and left. Mm. Let me know just how little I mattered after three years. So I say roll out if you can and you aren't married. Okay. Basically well, keep moving. I, to be honest with you, like I'm kind of agreeing with her, not because whatever wasn't working sexually, he didn't go to fix the problem. And that's with anything. If you're with anyone and there's an issue and you're telling them that this is what the issue is and this is what you have a problem with and they're unwilling to work on that, then, yeah, you need to leave because life is a bunch of problems. We're humans. We're going to have problems. Are you willing to take the steps to fix those problems? But it said couldn't fix, couldn't be fixed with costly medication. But then she said... He didn't seek help until after I left. Okay. So I guess I... So, right. So it, it, his... All right. This is all about communication. <clears throat> if you're with someone... All right, you have men that go to war, women that go to war, come back maimed. Come back up, up maimed in the head. Right. We all... We're humans. We all go through stuff. But where I think age is a factor because I think psychologically you have to understand that at some point in your life, another human being on this earth is going to need you more than your needs need to be met. Mm. That's just a fact. So if you're with someone and you're having sex with them, you need to realize that that sex means something. Whether it's good or bad, you finding it out sooner than later is good. If you're having sex with someone and it's because you're insecure and you think that sex means that they love you, that relationship is doomed. <laughs> if you're having sex and it's because you all share something in intimate and you're comfortable with or without it, hey, you know, it, 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 people have sex for different reasons, Lynn. No, I agree. And I'm still and trying so, to figure that out. I don't see nobody saying that sex has nothing to do with a human, a human's, um, the obstacles that take place in a human's life. Sex has nothing to do with it. You're talking about two different, different things, and then you're adding love. And you're saying, well, if this person loved me, they'd stick around. I can love you and not be able to deal with the situation. However, I need to know that ahead of time. I need to know myself and know this just hit me. I need to, the reality of the situation is I'm not gonna be able to take this because I'm maybe not strong enough or I'm insecure. Or I don't know how much, how many needs, how much need do you have to have released where you would drop somebody that you love? Like, and I'm, I'm, I guess I'm asking that because I haven't had sex in a minute and I know how to please myself. So if somebody came along, if I was married, there's alternatives to me releasing and I still want my baby in the bed with me. Yeah. So I don't, this isn't making sense to me because everybody's coupling all these things together. And one thing has absolutely nothing to do with the other other than the mere fact, the main component is love. Mm. No, I got you. Well, the main component is love. However, uh, we have to find out what sex means to different people. Right. And what relationship means to different people. Oh, it's not a Stevie. Wardrobe thing. malfunction. <laughs> wardrobe malfunction? It could turn Is that making into... you twitch? <laughs> <laughs> so let's, uh, I know we have some more folks on the line. So we're going to go to the, and we're going to ask some of these people what the sex means to them. Yeah. Good question. Hello. La Lina. 
Yes, Romania, calling from East Flatbush in Brooklyn. That's what's up. I'm a Brooklyn boy myself. Thank you for calling tonight. Say hello to my co-host, Indy Smith, Lelina. Hi, co-host, Andy Smith. Hi, Lelina. I'm 62 Lelina. years old, and I saw you at the 70s show. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I, hey. I've been grooving to BLS as long as I can remember. Thank you. <laughs> I had to cry stone. Thank you so much. So, you know, I know you're calling in to ask uh, the answer to the topic tonight. But yeah, but I'm hoping that you give me some tickets or somewhere. <laughs> we get, you know what? We gave away those tickets already. Oh, I'm, that's okay. I'm I sorry, still love your but you know what? Story. Keep, but keep, keep listening. It may be coming up. I may have another pair coming up in just a second. Okay. Okay. Um, All right. But but can I ask you something to get back yes. on the on the topic that I was uh, that we threw out a little earlier? Can, can yes. what does sex mean to you? Like, is it really important in your life? Sex is important in my life, but in answer to that question, my husband, my first husband, we separated, divorced 20 years, and he, unfortunately, became a victim of HIV, and he asked me to help him die with dignity. Mm. And I lived with him for five years. He died. His, his head dropped in my arms. So if your heart is at the right place, you know, you, you're going to be there. You're going to be there. My my biggest, my oldest daughter's father. You're gonna be there. Wow. You've been through it, huh? Yes, I have. I see. Yes, I have. In sixty two years, you go through a lot, but yeah. you still never lose that spark. You know. <laughs> if it's true love, you never lose that spark. Exactly. Right. Yes, and, and that so was my first everything. You know what I'm saying? The spark wasn't There's the sex. no way the I could deny was... him uh, uh, to die with dignity. But how did you know, at what point in this relationship did you know it was real love and not just, you know what I mean? Well, when I went back and took care of him. You know, we stayed friends all through the 20 years that we were divorced, so we were always friends. But that first, you know what I mean? That, yeah, you're, so you're going to be there. So you were friends first? We, nah, well, no. 71 was a fast year. I met him February 7th. I had my first date February 14th. I got had first sex in April, got pregnant in May, got married to him in October, and had my daughter the next Valentine's Day. Oh wow. That was, like, okay. Can you run that by me one more time? Give, give me that timeline one more time. Okay, that was 70, 71. I met him February 7th of, seven, of seven, 70. I got my first date with him was at the St. George Hotel in February 14th. That's February 14th. Got had my first sex in April, got pregnant in May, got married in October, and had my daughter February se- February fourteenth of seventy one. Wow. wow, one year. <laughs> wow, Your that was, was a coming hell of a year. <laughs> you knew that you wanted to. Uh, you, did you? Well, did you plan it? Was it planned? Like you knew that this was going to be, this was going to be the 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 man that you kind of uh, you know decided to bring a child into the world with? No, I don't think you know much at 18 years old, but mm. you, you, you feel with your heart, you know? Right. Uh, you're, you're confused. There's so many emotions going on, but he, he, we died, and that was my best friend, and I wish he had been alive to go to that 70s show with me. Mm. <laughs> I know. I know that's right. Yeah. Well, the wonderful thing about... He died about... in 90. He died, at the, uh, the, he died in 99, September 11, 1999. Mm. Well, I know you celebrate his life often, and uh, yes, I do. Yes, and I celebrated it at the. We saw new birth and the emotions at that that concert at February fourteenth, nineteen seventy one. Yeah, we saw that concert. Wow, we saw them, and I went back to see them at the seventy show that you just had at, at the Beacon like, Theater. In, it was in February, right? You saw it at the Beacon, right? Yes, I did. Yeah, Walker and all. I know that's right. Well, That's right. Well, thank you so much for reaching out, and uh, thank you for listening as often as you do. I really appreciate it. And thank you for being, like I said, that sexy voice for years. Oh, you're very kind. <laughs> I faithfully, like the Bible, listen to my quiet song. Thank you so, thank you so much. I appreciate you. Bible on it. Okay. <laughs> Have a great weekend. Okay. You as well. Peace. Wow. Peace. Wow. See. That spark. It's not sex. Yeah, you're right. I mean, look, the way you start, one of my best friends, uh, Vito calls him Joey Crack. Mm-hmm. 
One of my best friend's <laughs> coin phrase is, the way you start is the way you finish. How you go in is how you come out. And I yep. can relate to that, to my last relationship, that's for sure. Okay, <laughs> so before you get angry. No, I'm not getting angry. Okay, so look, I'm going to read this really quick. Um, how do you and your mate use sex? Yes, use it. There's a quote here. A it pleasure. is merely a physical release, a series of muscular contractions that are explosively pleasurable and finally bring about relief of muscular tension throughout your body. If either of you are in need of such release, wouldn't you be better off masturbating? No. <laughs> if there's no, a, if, I mean, if there's a person there in your bed next to you, yeah. you want them to take part in helping with that release. If they can't, but they're significant, I oh, personally I believe as an adult, you need to know how to release yourself before you even have sex. Well, yeah, there I mean, is a point I in your life when you need to play with yourself and explore your body, and you need to understand what makes you tick. You are absolutely right. So I think we put so much pressure on another human being to satisfy us in so many ways, and we don't even know how to satisfy ourselves. And then we say we love them, but then we don't, when they don't do what we want them to do to satisfy that ego, mm -hmm. we just bounce. And, and, and I'm not saying that if you're in a messed up situation that doesn't work for you, don't leave. But don't blame you're mi being miserable on the other person. You be responsible for you and leave. Yeah, well. And don't set people up. And your personal opinion is you felt that he lasted too long because he kind of knew where his heart was and he knew what his desires were and he knew that he wouldn't be able to have balance and control with himself so he prolonged the situation and stayed in the situation longer and obviously now decided to walk away. Well, I don't know from Which hearing, is more devastating. Right, right. Hearing him, I think he feels bad because he feels bad that he is who he is. I'm just, I'm being honest. Like, he, his perspective was all jacked up. Because he was blaming the fail of the relationship on her illness as opposed to his perspective. Yeah. So I think that he honestly couldn't take it, masked it for a long time because he didn't want to look like the asshole. People will stay in situations so they don't look bad. That's selfishness, though. Yeah. Yeah. You know, they will do anything they have to so they don't look bad and be miserable and unhappy. And maybe, quite possibly, she could feel that and didn't feel like performing. Who's to know? Now that his butt is gone, she might get somebody to turn her on and she get a spark of energy. <laughs> yeah, it's possible. <laughs> I'm switching. Possible. Uh, Pretty Brown hits up on Facebook and says, how can you even consider sex? When your spouse or significant other is terminally ill. Thank you. Your main Who? focus should be your mate. Pretty, Pretty brown. Pretty brown. And like, right, like where is, where is your brain? And I'm not saying it's not important, but where is your brain? I don't know. Look, over 25,000 people hit us up on Facebook, and we had like over 478 comments that's just good. on this topic tonight. That's a good And A lot of folks, a, a lot of you guys have shared the topic. If you go to uh, the WBLS 107.5 NYC Facebook page, uh, we posted up an image and we posted up the topic and you can uh, feel free to see some of the many comments that have been uh, has been left up there for us. So um, please continue to engage. And uh, we have a Reality of Love uh, uh, fan page as well on Facebook. And we ask that you uh, like our page and also engage in conversation or put up your suggested uh <laughs> topics if you like for us to kind of deal with them because this topic tonight like I said came from an earlier phone call that we had and um, I decided hey let's make this into a topic tonight because it was pretty interesting of how uh, the brother was explaining what happened in his relationship and now he has decided to walk away because at first when he explained the situation I thought she walked away so right. I really wasn't clear until we kind of went really in depth well he did out. say 
she said I could leave or? Well, yeah, I mean, but who wants anybody around right. uh, after a period of time? If, right. if depending on what he said to her, I mean, you know, right. we, we're not there, so we don't know what happened, you know, blow from blow in, in this situation, but. I want tough. everyone to go online and look up the Kama Sutra. Now, Kama Sutra <laughs> is a very good, uh, no, it's a very good, it's a very good thing to uh, explore and, and to engage into. Um, it's uh, it's a cultural thing. It deals with from the Indian culture, mm -hmm. uh, but definitely, I think you should definitely uh, learn more about Kama Sutra. Mm -hmm. So you know, you know about the honey powder, the dust. I don't know anything about your honey <laughs> or your powder or any of that, you lady, or any about... little things you have in your so closet. So how can wait? If you don't know anything about it, why you rec you just recommend everybody to do it? And you, I know you other things. What do you what? Well, share. No. This is conf this is the no. extension of confessions. Of no. <laughs> Come on. No. <laughs> I just, I just, there are other ways to um, satisfy your physical needs other than penetration. Oh, oh suck their teeth. <laughs> Somebody you know just what? sucked their teeth. <laughs> so, the, I guess. It was a quick one, too. It wasn't a real one. Like, like. Well, if you gave, to that one. If you gave him a little moment, I'm sure he would have sure, got yeah, it. I'm sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. I mean, well, it's true. There are other ways. If you want to keep, look, this is all based on the importance of having this person in your life versus not. Well, it's about love. And I think we speak about it periodically. Yeah. You know, how vulnerable will people be for love? And I think, I really don't think that you can really understand the impact or the, the level or the intensity of what real love is until you allow yourself to be vulnerable. The problem with most people, and especially men having a problem with being vulnerable, obviously, it opens up the heart for an arrow or for a fist or for a Mack truck or a diesel bus to kind of run over it 5,000 times. And who wants to be hurt? At well, the end of the day? I'm going to be honest with you. I think, if not more, I think men are more vulnerable than women. We are, but I think men have a tendency to... Um, protect it and not express it uh, and, and afraid to show it. I and think you have your own language. I, I think women don't understand it, so we don't see it well, as... It's hard to understand something when it's locked in a vault. You know, again, the vault has to be opened up, I think, well, not unless you have some kind of x-ray vision or you're a special person. I mean, over like the in, years, over the years, I'm going to be honest, I've, I've learned to read it a bit more. Um... Considerations, I think, is a love language from a man. Like, if a man considers you um, in ways of, I don't know, like picking up something from the store or just giving you a call to see how you are, or it, it doesn't have to be a present or these big, huge gestures. Like, I think that's enough. For you. Well, that should be enough for any human being. Well, you know what? Because it's basic kindness Again, in that the, is what's important. You, I hear so, you, but you know what? You're speaking from a mature standpoint. At 20 years old, you didn't have this maturity. Um, I, You may have I, had balance. You may yeah. have had understanding. Well, I've, I've never been a things person. Okay. But there's a lot of women out here that are a things person. I think... I, mm. I mean, everything is based on individualism. Yeah. It would be wonderful. It we is. would have a great society if everyone thought so logically and so fairly and so comfortable as you present it. I mean, I think I I probably would have been married by now. I don't believe in fair. I don't use that word. I don't like it. I think it's an okay, excuse. Well, well the Balance, maybe, but fair, it's just like an excuse to Fair and balance is, the, is in the same classroom, else. just in a different part of the classroom. But this is my thing. And, and today, and unfortunately, in these days and age, we have so much misogynistic stuff going on. I'm speaking from a female's perspective. Mm. To have just a regular sweet guy do something normal and not care about the size of my behind, I, I, I'm going to pay attention to that. Mm. And if I don't and I care about the size of my behind in his mind, then I don't need to be in a relationship. That's simple. And like I said earlier, 
if your value is in your sex in your sex life, if your relationship and the value of your relationship is how often you have sex, how long he lasts, how long she lasts, how how does she does she um I don't know, have multiple orgasms. Do I get oral sex enough times? If that is the value of your relationship, you don't have a relationship. Right. You just have someone you're having sex with. Exactly. And time, time does not determine the quality of your relationship. The character of the person determines the, the quality of your relationship. So shout out to the woman who had a heart attack because you got rid of his ass. Lisa hit us up on Facebook. She says, my husband was terminally ill. I loved him unconditionally, hmm. never thought about sex with someone else. My husband asked if I needed sex, as if I did. It was okay to fulfill that need. My baby loving me was all I prayed for. He has been gone now for 14 months, and I still have not addressed missing sex yet. Hmm. Still healing my heart. Right. Uh, Monique said, uh, good times and bad, you don't leave. That's what love is. And Siobhan says, till the very end, uh, right by his side, kissing him, loving him, rubbing him, and never making him feel or think that he's less than the man he's always been. So it's interesting because I, I, we had a, an enormous amount of responses mm. from women. And men. You had yeah, some men. But, but the majority have been men, women. Women. Um, but I think you know. I think if once I think once I think once we get to a level of understanding the true value of what life is, the true right. value of finding an ideal person who's really uh, a part of your life and who you know is is there for you on every level. If we understand that true value mm -hmm. in that individual or what we have in that individual, it's not until then that we will learn to appreciate the importance of what life is, really is. And some people may may not. Some people don't even see it in, in their mates these days. They may see it or hope to see it probably in their children, you know, in terms of right. understanding what, what real love is. Right, right. Well, and, or friends. Or friends, yeah. Friends with no, with no strings attached, which is odd to me because if I can depend on a girlfriend or a male friend that I'm not having sex with, you know, what does that say about... My partner. Well, these and days, these days, there's so many women having sex with women. It's oh. like, I mean, yeah, I could just go to the club and wonder if are they having sex. You know what, club? too? <laughs> really, I don't, I don't know. Mm. Uh oh, Billionaire Magazine. Shout oh. out to Billionaire Magazine. Hola. Um, appreciate you guys uh, supporting what we do here inside of the Quiet Storm and, and the entire team <clears throat> from Global Vito to uh, the entire team. Thank you so much for blasting us up, for embracing us, and uh, for being there. We really appreciate it. Billionaire Magazine, that's what's up there. On Instagram, so make sure that you uh, lock in with them on Instagram as well. Cool. And I just want to say this. I'm not condemning anyone who understands they have needs. If you have needs, just be respectful that another person has needs also. Yep. And it might be, that need might be communicating. That simple. Don't assume that because you're uncomfortable in a situation, it's all about you. You have to be responsible. You are responsible for the energy you bring into the room. Always. So, you know, if you're uncomfortable in a situation, you have every right to not want to be in it. But it's not what you do, it's how you do what you do. You better preach tonight. <laughs> With my no, my lineata voice. Wait, first, so don't be putting my name. Don't. No. Because you know what's going to happen? No, what's going to happen? You're going to have somebody come up with a character named Lineata, and she's going to be so cute. You know what? You watch. <laughs> I want my 10%. You know what? Lineata. Last week's Lineata show Green. was pretty interesting. Don't start for this week, right? One. <laughs> Home run a month is all I need. Anyway, uh, to read oh, yeah, a couple of more of the other responses regarding the topic tonight, and if you're just joining me, shout out to Banks. Um, <coughs> if your partner becomes significantly ill and cannot fulfill your sexual needs, do you leave or do you see it through? Sharon says, love is love, sex is sex. 
Eugene says, uh, you see it through. However, you both have needs, and it is good to come to an agreement before you say, I do. The yep. agreement should be mutual. Another cat hit us up. James says, I'd stay because I didn't marry for sex. I married my wife because we're in love, and to this very day, we still are. Aww. Too vulnerable. See, you got to be vulnerable to love. That's what I think. I don't know. Look, I'm not. I'm not married. I've never been married, so don't don't listen to me. I've been married and I still love my husband. Oh, ex-husband. Oh, we're friends. If he got sick, I'd be there. That's I good. wouldn't. We're friends. I don't know if it's. <laughs> oh, I don't know. He's not married. Oh, if he was okay. married, I have to. Oh, well, then I wouldn't you need wouldn't to. Be I'd be. Well, I'd be there for her if we were close. I'd be there to support her. Yeah. 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 Oh, I'm totally re- like whatever. I believe in boundaries and respect. That's a friend, though. That is a friend. It's not just about me. Like, if somebody comes into your life and they feel intimidated, you all need your space. You need to work that out. Hey, I'm here when you need me. Give me a call. But I'm not. Yeah. Oh no. That's what's up. I'm fine with that. Hmm? What is it? Yes, yeah, she is mic. a great friend. We should all have good friends. Oh, my voice. Is it we're on? going to be there. Yeah, yep. it should be. All right, this lady, uh, Tanya, she says, I'm conflicted with this, and I suppose that I could write my own strawberry letter. I love the same man for over 25 years, and in the beginning of our relationship, it was beautiful. I loved and trusted him with all of my heart. Then I found out he's seeing another woman, not only seeing her, but she also gave him a son. (laughs) Through all of that, I still stayed because I loved him, but I was still so very angry with him. Several years later, we find out that he has high blood pressure and can no longer work like he used to. He wasn't able to fulfill me sexually because of his medication, and because of that, I stopped wanting it. I thought about leaving him because I did want to have a sexual relationship with him, but I could, but I just could not get past the deceit, and I wanted him to feel my pain. I know it wasn't right, but I seeked attention with another man, Mm. and then I fell in love with him. I want my children's father to get healthy and move on with his life because we did have a beautiful relationship for the first eight years. This year would make 26 years together. What's your opinion of all this? Should I stay or should I go? Go. Absolutely go. You should have left. Yeah. When he, way when he had the baby. Before. Yeah. You should have left way And before. you're absolutely right for being angry. But now you need to be angry with yourself because you stayed being angry. It's not a relationship. So I say go. The relationship was over once yeah. he stepped out of the relationship. And then when he he had a child outside of. Yeah. Wow. And yeah. you forgave that? Okay. Kudos nice. to you, but you need to go. Yeah. The party has been over. Yeah, the, the, oh, the, yeah. We talked. Yeah, tell her. That came on Facebook, Sorry. so we're going to we're going to uh, reply back to her right. on Facebook. Wow. See? You see how people layer... Oh, damn it. Hold up. Hold <laughs> up. Somebody is pressing weights. I'm sorry. I had to digress. Oh, I just felt it, and so I'm not having sex. <laughs> That's my sex. That's your sexual um, thing for tonight? <laughs> you see how people are layering stuff? Yeah. Like, one thing after... Like, they're putting things together that don't belong together... And their perspective is all jacked up. Yeah, I, I agree, but but it, a wow. lot of things filter into that though. A lot of filter, you get, know, oh yeah. what oh filters yeah, into yeah. that is afraid to let go. Yeah, not loneliness. to want to be alone. You know, those are the two primary things: afraid to let go. Will I find somebody else? Right. Well, I I'm sure that you'll find somebody else. So hopefully, he's going to respect you first and foremost, and and not step out of the relationship. Right. That that's key, and then. You know, to what kind of responsibility does did he did he realize he didn't? I mean, want to fulfill because he's married to you. You've been together for a long time, and then okay, it's one thing to be messing around on the side and you're married, and then you're going to be sloppy with it and get somebody pregnant. Doing dirt and you're in slop- dirt. I mean, he's sloppy with it because even if the woman said, "Nah, I, no, everything's good. I'm on birth control," you are married, dude. Strap it up five times if need be, if you have to do this. Who? Smart. Smartphone. 
Talk about it, you mean? Smartphone. Smartphone is a, is a song that uh, oh. that Trey Songs has out. Oh. And uh, basically, it's a situation where <laughs> have you accidentally uh, dialed but someone? dialed. Booty what? dialed somebody. Booty dialed somebody up. And uh, well, uh, it doesn't actually have to be drunk. I mean, you could just be as sober as a straight nail. Block your phone. I learned that but, from you and, and Ben. Well, the well, only reason why I started locking my phone, because I never really locked my phone, was when I lost my phone. Right. And I realized, you know, all the value that was in it. Right. I didn't want people just to have access to it. Right. Lock so that's phone. the reason why I locked my phone. But before you lock your phone, depending on how much time you have on your phone, before it locks, not unless it's one second, then you could still oh, put your right. phone in your pocket right. and it would still do something. You're right. Absolutely. Here goes a rare moment. Oh, Lord. With Vito. Here we go. Whoa, 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 I'm whoa. nervous. What are you nervous about? I Probably. don't know. You're reckless now. No, no reckless. I just want to know, if somebody was to pocket dial you, right? Would you listen? Would, would you, you listen? listen? <laughs> would you Hell yeah. Would you stay on the phone? <laughs> oh, really? Really? How, yes. How long I'm going to listen. How long would you stay on the phone? I don't know. Until it drops? Yeah. Wait, how do you? How does it drop? It doesn't drop. Yes, it can. She can wow. The person can realize that the, the phone is oh, on. Oh, and then and, they hang yeah. up? And don't hear them say, oh, shit. Oh, wait. Okay, so wait. <laughs> and don't, don't hear sounds like... <laughs> wait, wait, wait. So do you mean who is pocket dialing you? The person that you're with or anyone? Anyone. I'm going to listen. I, I'm, I'm going to listen. I'm going to listen. And I'm going to listen until the phone, uh, the phone exactly. drops. Exactly. Yeah, I'm going to listen, listen. too. We're all listening. And it, has nothing, listening. And, and it has nothing to do with trust. Yes, it it's, does. No, no, it doesn't. For me, it doesn't. Well, I just want to know what's going on. I'm nosy. Yeah. 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 I'm nosy. Yeah. I'm, I'm nosy. Really? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, why are you doing it? You're doing it for trust issues? I'm doing it for a lot of things. Because you're I'm nosy. Do- so, if, so, so, so if it was your significant, <laughs> if it was your significant other, right? Yeah. Right? yeah. And, and you and you hear the conversation. If it was, if it was Look, just you, a friend. I'm still listening. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Hey. If there was a conversation with you, you hear her voice and you hear Mel's voice, right? And it's no big deal. Oh God! I mean, it could be a big deal. It might be a big deal for you because you don't know. She might have told you she was going somewhere else, and then you, right. You, and would you let her know, or would you hold it in? Yeah, when the when the phone call ended, would you call back? Or would you let her know? Oh, to come that's home? a good one. Would call back, let... and then she didn't pick up. It's I'm it's the orange stuff. juice Jones situation. Mm. Oh, I man. saw you and him walking in the rain. <laughs> I, I followed you today, you know? Oh, that's what you would you do? Know? I mean, I, look, I lived that. Remember I told you, you know? Um, yeah. So, yeah, through the rain. So I would, uh, I would wait. I would wait and see if she would bring something up to me. I may, oh, hint, wow. I may hint something. You wouldn't call her back after the phone dropped? Like, after the phone call dropped? Oh, wait. No, I, no. Would, I want to think it out first. Heard. Right. Depends on what I heard. Oh, Okay. And I want to wait. I want to wait and kind of see how do I th- how do I present this? How do how do I bring it up? Right. And then I'm going to Yeah, don't show all your cards right away, right? Nah, not right, not right away cuz cuz you You like my Kathleen Turner voice? Oh, now it's Kathleen Turner. My Lynetta voice. Right here. <laughs> you don't like that name? No. No. <laughs> Len Marie. So I just want I just wanted to close out the show with that that, that song. Smart song. Too. Yeah. Smartphone. You, you want, smartphone. So you're gonna Trey Songs. Yeah, I'm gonna play it. Play, yeah. So if you've never heard the song, you're about to hear it from Trey Songs. It's mm-hmm. off uh, the brand new CD album. My my favorite. I'm still you know a what Nana. My favorite song. What, Nana? Nana. <laughs> Wait. I like need, Nana because of the video. I like Nana because yeah, the video. Of the video. But I need to find that gym. Why was she a gem? No, gym. Oh, the gym. <laughs> hey, babe. Talking about my girl, you know. That's such a big deal. Hello? Let's keep it up. Hello? Hello? See my drink? What the fuck is... Oh, hell no. Hello? Trey. Trey. Oh. 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 Up the phone in my head, I know I'm wrong. I just wanna know what she's heard. I'm pacing back and forth, cause I know that I've been caught trying to think of the perfect words. So I can come to her and lie right to her face. I don't know what I'm gonna.